Hello guys, warm greeting and welcome to my channel. In the process of upskilling ourselves, today we will cover ICH guideline Q3A R2. So Q3A is guideline provided by ICH for impurities in new drug substances. Q3A R2 document is intended to provide guidance for registration application on the content Content means uh, what required to be produced in the specification in terms of the impurities and qualification. If impurity is more than the qualification threshold, then how to qualify the impurities in the new drug substance means API. So, as impurities in the document or impurities basically classified in three types organic impurities, inorganic impurities, and residual solvents. So, organic impurities are drug related impurities which arise from the drug substance storage or the process of drug substance manufacturing. So, organic impurity can arise during the manufacturing process and uh, or storage of the new drug substance and include the, these impurities may arise from starting material, byproducts, intermediate, degradation product, reagent, ligand and catalyst. So, during the process of the drug substance manufacturing or during the storage of the drug substance. So these are drug related impurities and they arise from the these, these uh, elements which are uh, used uh, in the drug substance manufacturing process. So from there it may arise. Inorganic impurities would say these are the inorganic in nature. So inorganic impurities and they are also arise during the manufacturing process. They may contain regions, ligands and catalysts. From there these inorganic impurities can come heavy metals or other residual metals. From there inorganic impurities can come inorganic salts, other material filter aids like charcoal etc. used in the drug substance manufacturing. So from there inorganic impurities can come. Residual solvents solvents or inorganic or organic liquids used as a vehicles for the preparation of solution or suspension in the synthesis of the drug substance so from there residual solvent may come so inorganic impurity residual solvent we will discuss in detail in the separate separate part of the ICH guideline also here in this in this uh, part in this video we will discuss the organic impurities which is covered by the ICH Q3A so also uh, some extraneous uh, contam uh, contaminants which also can present as an impurity uh, so that is addressed in the GMP so that is not covered in the document polymorphic impurities polymorphic forms and initiomeric impurity that is also not covered in the document which will cover in the further video so impurities means unwanted substance in the drug substance okay so these are controlled by our specification so what our specification should have so our spe specification means our control strategy so our control strategy should have organic impurities inorganic impurities and residual solvents Okay, so these three uh, elements of the specification control organic impurities, inorganic impurities and residual solvent present in the drug substance. So organic impurity should have each specified identified impurity. Each specified identified impurity means impurity is uh, uh, identified, you know the structure of the impurity. Each specified unidentified impurity, you don't know the structure of the impurity but it is more than the reporting threshold. So it should be reported but it is unidentified because it is less than the identification threshold. Any unspecified impurity with an acceptance criteria of not more than the identification threshold. So any unknown impurity which not routinely comes to which it is an unknown impurity but it is not more than the identification threshold. So that also present in the specification total impurities. Summation of all impurities, total impurities should present in our specification to have a control strategy for organic impurities. So how to report the impurity of the batches? So below 1% the result should be reported to two decimal places example 0 0.06 0 0.01 0 0.13 0 0.13 at and above one percent the result should be reported at one decimal place like 1.3 so if input is less than one percent it is reported uh, as a two decimal place and a normal rounding of rule which we routinely follow that can be used to round off to, uh, to make it to the two decimal place and the input is more than one percent so only one decimal place if higher reporting threshold is proposed it should be fully justified all impurities at a level greater than the reporting threshold should be summed and reported as a total impurities so uh, in the next slide we will understand what is the reporting threshold 
above the reporting threshold whatever impurities we are getting that should be reported and total impurity will be a summation of all the reported impurities of that particular batch of the drug substance chromatogram of the representative batches from the analytical validation study showing separation and detectability of impurity on spike samples along with any other impurity test routinely performed can serve as a representative impurity profile the applicant the applicant should uh, that complete impurity profile example chromatogram so this chromatogram whatever came during the validation batches or so they may be asked by the regulatory agency so they it needed to be presented each impurity should be properly uh, each chromatogram should show proper separation of each impurity and uh, is proper validation of the uh, impurity is required before reporting it a proper validation of the method required before reporting the impurity by that method so let's we understand uh, what are the different thresholds and how to report the impurity and how to decide the impurity limit for the drug substance as per ICH Q3A okay so first is the maximum daily dose we know what is the maximum daily dose of drug substance so uh, ICH uh, for drug substance the maximum daily dose the limit proposed by classifying maximum daily dose by two two part that is less than 2 gram per day and less than equal to 2 gram per day and greater than 2 gram per day so if uh, your maximum daily dose will be less than 2 gram per day then reporting threshold will be 0.05 percent okay what is the reporting threshold above this above 0.05 percent you have to report the impurity if it is below 0.05 percent no need to report that impurity what is the identification threshold if the impurity value is more than the 0.1 percent 0.10 percent or 1 mg per day intake so uh, how to uh, how, how to just justify this this we will uh, learn uh, now only so what I want to say that if your maximum daily dose is less than 2 gram per day and reported impurity is 0.1 percent it is more than 0.1 if it is less than 0.1 percent no need to identify the structure if it is more than the identification threshold that is 0.1 percent in this case then structure need to be identified then qualification threshold what qualification threshold is if there is no structure uh, structural risk if the impurity is more than the identification threshold you need to identify its structure if a structure is safe it is reported safe through the earlier studies then no need to qualify that impurity is okay up to 0.15 percent for a maximum daily dose less than equal to 2 gram per day okay but if it is more than the qualification threshold then qualification of that impurity will be required or uh, it is required to reduce that impurity more than uh, to less than the qualification threshold so three thresholds are there first is the reporting threshold above that you have to report that impurity then the identification threshold above that if impurity is there you have to identify structure third is a qualification threshold above the qualification threshold you have to qualify that impurity so uh, for less than uh, for the maximum daily dose less than equal to 2 gram per day reporting threshold is 0.05 identification threshold is 0.1 percent qualification threshold is 0.15 for the maximum dose greater than 2 gram per day reporting threshold is 0.03 identification threshold is 0.05 qualification threshold is 0.05 okay so let's uh, we do practically so 0.5 gram per day is the maximum daily dose so raw result are reported like that 0 0.044 0 0.0963 0 0.12 0 0.161 these are raw results all are expressed in the percentage okay so how to report the result we know if the below uh, one then two decimal places so 0 0.04 0, 0 0.04 okay so 0 0.5 gram um, is the maximum daily dose okay so it, it will fall in the this category less than equal to 2 gram per day category okay so reporting threshold is 0 0.05 percent here it is coming 0 0.04 it will be reported no it will be not reported because it is less than the reporting threshold okay second impurity is 0 0.09 so we will round off it will become 0 0.10 okay it is more than the 0 0.0 yes it will be reported as 0 0.10 third impurity is 0 0.12 okay it is already in two decimal place okay it is less than the, it is uh, more than the 0.05 percent yes it is more than the reporting threshold it will be reported same it is 0 0.16 it will be reported 0 0.16 okay now the total daily intake of the impurity how it will, it will be calculated see this is the 0.04 percent okay 
so let's let uh, take our calculator so our maximum day dose is 0.5 gram yeah and uh, the uh, result reported for input is 0.05 it will be not reported just we are calculating so if you calculate it it will come around 0.2 mg okay so this is mentioned 0.2 mg so when uh, this input is 0.04 it will it will go inside 0.2 total daily intake of this particular input is 0.2 calculated from the maximum day dose so it will not reported so let uh, let discuss of other input okay so it is 0 0.1 so 0 0.5 so 0 0.5 multiply by 0 0.1 percent it will come 0 0.5 mg same 0 0.6 mg 0 0.8 mg so it will be this is the total daily intake of the impurity okay so these are the reported result of impurity so let's uh, let's see which impurity uh, cross over the antification threshold so antification threshold is 0.1 percent okay so here it is 1 mg what it means uh, that i will tell you see if the maximum daily dose is 0 0.5 gram okay so how to calculate the antification threshold you have to take 0 0.5 gram you have to multiply by 0.1 percent so it will be it will come around 0.5 mg so 0.5 mg is less than the 1 mg Okay, so 0.1% will be the identification threshold. If the maximum daily dose is such as my 0.1% come 1.1 mg, then I have to follow the identification threshold as 1 mg. Okay, so in this case 0.5 gram multiplied by 0.1%, it will come less than the uh, 1 mg. So 0.1% will be my identification threshold. So here it is not reported, so it is not cause the identification threshold. Here it is 0.1, so it is not more than the 0.1%, so it is not cause the identification threshold. Here it is 0.12, yeah, it is cause it, it is more than the 0.1%, it is cause the identification threshold. This also cause the identification threshold. What it means that for these two impurities, we need to identify structure of the impurity. So let's check which impurity is more than the qualification threshold okay so uh, again uh, this category will be the uh, the maximum daily dose is 0.5 gram only so 0.15 percent or 1 mg let's calculate 0.5 into 0.15 percent okay so it is coming 0.75 mg so it is less than the 1 mg so 0.15 will be the qualification threshold okay so 0.15 is the qualification threshold how much it is coming zero how much it is coming 0 0.12 so 0 0.12 is less than the qualification threshold so no need to qualify 0 0.16 yeah this is the more than the qualification threshold so here we need to qualify the impurity uh, let's take second example so here the maximum daily is 0.8 right so a similar way uh, we can ch uh, check it these are the raw results okay raw result uh, round off to two decimal place it will be reported at 0. Uh, it will be 0 0.07 it is more than the uh, maximum daily dose is less than the 2 grams so 0 0.05 will be the reporting threshold it is more than the 0 0.05 so it will be reported it is 0 0.12 it will be reported it is 0 0.14 it will be reported so these impurities are reported this is that so then the identification threshold so what is the identification threshold here also we can calculate it will be 0.1 percent only so in case of 0.1 percent it is less than the identification threshold 0 0.6 so no need uh, so uh, 0 0.07 so no need to uh, identify this input is 0. 1 to yes it is more than the identification threshold 0.14 yes it is more than the identification threshold okay then the qualification threshold see qualification threshold how how can we calculate first uh, how much the maximum daily dose 0.8 gram okay how will be the qualification threshold multiply by 0.15 percent okay it is coming 1.2 mg yeah 1.2 mg is more than the 1.2 mg is more than the 1 mg so here limit will be not the 0.15 percent here for 0.8 gram maximum daily dose qualification threshold limit will be 1 mg okay so let's see the mg intake of the impurity so uh, 0.12 means 1 mg it is not more than the qualification threshold but yes 0.14 means 1.1 mg it is more than the qualification threshold so this impurity the third one impurity need to be qualified okay so here here then uh, what is the qualification of the impurity right so qualification is the process of acquiring and evaluating data that establish the biological safety of an individual impurity or a given impurity profile at the levels specified the applicant should uh, apply the applicant should provide a rational for establishing impurity acceptance criteria that includes safety consideration okay impurities that are also significant metabolites present in animal and or human studies are generally considered qualified so 
qualification impurity means to determine the biological safety of the impurity so if impurity is more than the qualification threshold so then you need to qualify that impurity so to ensure that it is not a genotoxic like that you have to ensure so for that toxicological studies provided or already pro all if that impurity is some metabolites or already some study will uh, perform then you can take that qualification uh, qualification limit which is qualified by that study a level of qualified impurity higher than the present in a new drug substance can also be justified based on the analysis of the actual amount of impurity administered in the previous relevant safety study so if some safety study carried out and based on the actual what impurity level found to be uh, safe by calculating the dose of that impurity so you can uh, you can extend your limit above the qualification threshold also if the input is safe if it is biological safety established if data are unavailable to qualify the proposed acceptance criteria of an impurity studies to obtain such data can be appropriate this type of studies can be designed so we'll go through the uh, we'll go through the a decision tree which is provided in the ICH Q3A how to decide for your impurity right so first if the impurity if the reported result are more than the reporting threshold then we have to report it okay then when the reporting re reported result uh, came on pick, uh, on your table then you can see whether the reporting whether the impurity is greater than the identification threshold if it is not greater than the identification threshold no action no action required if it is more than the identification threshold we have to check whether the structure identified or no if the structure is identified and any uh, known human risk is uh, any known human relevant risk is there then we have to reduce it to the safe level right if uh, the, uh, if uh, there is no human risk if there is no human risk then uh, we have to check whether it is the it is more than the qualification threshold if it is not more than the qualification threshold no action will be required right if it is more than the qualification threshold we have to qualify it okay so uh, we have to qualify it so if it is more than the qualification threshold we have to uh, if it is greater than the qualification threshold then uh, either we have to reduce it uh, to less than the qualification threshold if it is not possible then we have to qualify it how to qualify it by by carrying out the uh, patient by carrying out the toxicological study uh, consider patient population duration of the studies genotoxic study are the one of the uh, toxicological study in which we see the point mutation chromosomal aberration so based on that study then generally toxicological study is performed it is animal study also human study also for 14 to 90 days other specific toxic endpoints are appropriate so whatever the endpoint decided in that study based on that biological safety of that particular input established if um, no clinical uh, adverse effect observed then the uh, amount by which the input is qualified that amount can be there that limit can be taken as a qualification limit so this is about this is all about the impurities in the drug substance in next video we'll cover other parts of the ICH guideline thank you very much if you like the if you like the video then please subscribe the channel and like this video so as to motivate us thanks thanks a lot bye bye